From the United Nations in New York, an unedited interview program on global issues. This is World Chronicle. And here is the host of today's World Chronicle. Hello, I'm Tony Jenkins. The United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Western Asia, or ESQA, serves as the main general development forum within the United Nations for the region covering the Middle East, including both Palestine and Iraq. Its goal, to promote economic and social development through regional cooperation and integration. But how can development take place in countries rife with conflict? And what role specifically can women play to foster so socio-economic development during such conflict? These are some of the questions that will be addressed by our guest today, Ms. Mervat Talawi, ESQA's Executive Secretary. Mervat Talawi, welcome. Um, I want to ask the first obvious question, which is, how can you talk about economic development and integration in a region where so many countries uh, are plagued by such problems? The two most obvious ones that spring to mind are the situation in Iraq and the situation in Palestine. Does it make sense to be in trying to invest resources in economic development when they're at war? Uh, as you know, the, some of these uh, uh, problems, like the Palestinian, it is with us since uh, half a century. If we continue without any investment in development, uh, I think things will change to the worse. Th that's compel us that we, while there is war, we should not uh, stay idle from development. You can't wait for peace. No, I That's cannot. Uh, and uh, at the same time, I would like uh, that the world would also understand that if we have a UN objective and UN Millennium uh, goals to attain, uh, therefore they have to take into consideration that uh, the peaceful uh, resolution of these problems is the only way. Uh, to, to let economic and social development take its course. Right, but you're not going to wait for peace. There are a lot of issues that we've got to talk about. Joining us in the studio today, we have Louis Hammond of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation and <coughs> Salah Ahwad of Ashark al Awsat newspaper based in London. Uh, Salah, why don't you jump in? Yeah, just to follow the same question, uh, uh, just I want to ask, you know, how, what, what, uh, do you have any difficulty or any problems you know, to, to have an access? go especially in the occupied territories which we know and the occupied territory situation is very bad and because um, uh, because always there is a military operation by the Israeli forces and the same time also the access in the ground in Iraq and we know also the security situation over there it's really very bad can you tell us how we deal with this problem? the situation in the occupied territory of course it is uh, very difficult I, I need not uh, uh, dwell on it because you see it on the TV every day uh, to get uh, we have to get a permission from the Israeli authority to go into uh, the occupied territory uh, we get it at the end uh, sometimes after delay but um, my last visit was in January situation is there I practiced myself all this uh, uh, barricade and uh, checkpoints and you mean you lived through it? Yes, I, li I lived. Uh, I lived through it. And uh, as one uh, woman uh, professor in the university, she told me, in order to uh, give a lecture of two hours, I have to spend uh, six hours on the road. So this is the kind of difficulty that we have. But the important thing was to put the Palestinian together, whether private sector, uh, civil society, or the authority, the Palestinian authority, together to put a priorities for mm -hmm. the reconstruction and rehabilitation what we should start with if we want to help you uh, not only uh, the commission but all the other UN agency what are the priorities let's have a Palestinian priority so we can uh, work on on that basis so from January till uh, October we have been working with all these uh, partner in development and uh, regardless of the difficulty, uh, many Palestinians could not attend the forum, but we had the forum held lately in uh, Beirut, uh, where the European, the Arab, uh, the Palestinian got together with their civil society, banks, uh, private sector, and they are, we got very 
good uh, initiatives. All already in the three days, we got three initi uh, eight initiatives mm -hmm. with uh, more than 30 plus million to help the Gaza. 30 people. million dollars. Yes. To, has, uh, to help the Gaza people in, in this uh, extreme difficulty now to rebuild, to replant a one million olive tree mm -hmm. instead of those who have been uprooted since the Intifada. A million yeah. trees have been uprooted since yeah. the Intifada yes. started. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, um, uh, small loans for the women, especially those who lost their uh, uh, husband and uh, families. Uh, eight, uh, just eight initiatives that would help uh, from children, handicapped, uh, uh, medical unit, uh, the uh, sector, the, uh, the uh, agricultural sector in particular, at least to provide food by themselves to the Palestinians. Now, no, mi mis mm. Mr. Mm. if I can jump in, I mean, this mm. issue of access that, mm. that Salah has brought up obviously brings up the whole question of the role of Israel in yes. all this. As I understand it, Israel mm. is not a member of ESQA. Yes. Why not, and would it help if they were, or at least if you had an interlocutor in Jerusalem to no. try and make these issues Why sort of not? It is smoothly. a decision by the ECOSOC and General Assembly. It's a historical uh, situation <coughs> since they established ESQA. So it was a voting system in, in the United Nations. Whether the, uh, if Israel was uh, a member, would it help or not? It depends. I, it would help if there is peace between the parties. It would not help if the, 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 this conflict would remain and the debate will turn into political issues. Now we are talking about road, about water, desertification, uh, all the social range of issues. But uh, if we have this uh, Palestinian issue without any resolution between uh, Israel and Palestine, then we will, again, it will become a political forum, uh, the same debate. Now, we, we've spent a lot of time here just in the, in the opening of the show talking about Palestine, Iraq, I'm sure will follow. Mm -hmm. You've got more than 30 countries in, in Esqua. Is our Israel in Iraq, or rather the, the occupied territories in Iraq, siphoning all your energy? In other words, do you also have time to tend to problems in the 30 some other countries that you uh, are uh, responsible for? You see, uh, of course, uh, you have to understand that this geographical area called uh, the Arab countries or the Middle East or, uh, is a small area. Uh, in proximity, is small. And it affects what is happening in Iraq, for instance, affects Lebanon, Syria, uh, Jordan, uh, Saudi Arabia, whether smuggling uh, of arm, whether uh, movement of personnel, whether trade uh, activities. In, in trade, you have the official trade activities and, and non-official trade. You mean smuggling? Yes, yes. it is uh, happening. It's normal mm -hmm. between border. Uh, so uh, it affects the member states. So our energy is, is affected because the, the, the region used to be one area. The people are used to move into uh, this area freely without passport, without... Uh, we're talking uh, about colonial times when yes, they were under yes, the yes. Ottoman occupation and then later the British and even the French. Before, even before. Uh, during okay, well, what you say makes a lot of sense. Reintegrate all of these countries, get them start trading together, get some economic activity going. To do that, as I understand it, uh, what you, your, you say your priorities are to start building the infrastructure, roads and rail links, so that these countries can actually start trading again together. But aren't there uh, major structural problems that make, the, make that very hard to achieve? I mean, we've already talked a little bit about the situation in Palestine. And in fact, we barely scratched the surface because I'm astonished that you want to invest resources into Palestine when, as I understand it, according to your figures, a billion dollars worth of infrastructure has been destroyed by the Israeli occupation forces in the last, mm -hmm. since, well, since 2000. 650,000 Palestinian men have been detained. Um, uh, wow. more, than, more than half of all Palestinian households have lost more than 50% of their revenue. Unemployment stands at a range that Seven. oscillates between 26 and 36%. Two million Palestinians now live on $2 a day, more or less. I, I find it extraordinary that you think you could talk about rebuilding infrastructure and integrating Palestine into the region when you're looking at those sorts of problems. But even if you were to be able to get beyond that, you then have other um, structural problems such as corruption, for example. Isn't that a major problem? 
Corruption is a major problem everywhere, not only Palestine, but uh, in most of the developing country. Uh, my 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 problem here is that if you leave a situation like uh, Palestine without any help, without any connection with the the Arab surrounding, and therefore the the end result, they will become uh, displaced people given the rate of destruction of homes like what is happening now in Gaza, then the, you have uh, a bunch of, uh, 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 of nomadic people that uh, are about to be exiting the, the territory. Uh, the Israeli will say we don't have uh, an interlocutor on the other part with whom are we going to have peace unless these people would stand on their feet and uh, have uh, some help to restore uh, productivity in the agricultural uh, area and in the industrial area and in the service area uh, to get connected with other uh, people in the diaspora you, you you know that during the last 10 years the the palestinian in in the diaspora they sent more than 14 billion dollars to, to their uh, uh, parents or their families, their families in, 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 uh, in the, in the occupied, occupied territory. territory. So, but it seems to me, so what you're saying is that you need to create the seeds of hope. You need to m get people dreaming and planning for the future so that when it becomes physically more feasible, yeah. there will be some plans ready to put into action. Is that what it, you're saying? Um, more than that, I'm saying, this is what I'm saying, but in addition, it will give the Palestinian hope and other way of... Uh, struggle other than the military struggle, that they have something to develop, that they have something to look at the results, and they would shift their, their mind from just the, the military fighting or the suicidal attack into development. The development could be a way of uh, standing up to the, the, to the Israeli and a hope to, for the future. So we take it as a sign of resist, uh, res uh, resistance. The, through development, not through. You're making it sound right, quite political, actually, when you say it, it's talk of it as resistance. So, uh, uh, yes, uh, can to you convince tell us them uh, for for the argument. I mean, to convince that there are other ways of 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 uh, asking for your rights, of uh, asking for the international law and all these rights. The right to development is one of the rights. So. Can you tell us which kind of difficulty you facing? In country which, as uh, Tony said, uh, they have corruption, government corrupted, and at the same time there's a lack, a uh, lack of uh, civil society, for example. Uh, the role of the woman is completely limited in some area. So, which kind of difficulty can you tell us? Which a lot of difficulties from the government point of view. They say as long as there is war, occupation, violence, disturbance. We don't, it's not our priority, for instance, to think of the right of women mm -hmm. or equality between groups and so on. Uh, at the same time, don't underestimate the role played by the United Nations all through these years that you are increasing awareness, that you're bringing these items of corruption, of good governance, of human rights into the agenda of the national agenda of so many uh, member states that they never heard it at at a given moment to speak about poverty in this country it was a taboo mm -hmm. now they are having a plan of action to fight uh, poverty by th the year 2015 uh, human rights women issues they were also things uh, that you should not touch upon now that some of them they have institution on human rights mm -hmm. they they are proud they have women minister and so on and so forth it still they didn't reach equality as we would wish to see or according to the convention of the united nations but uh, there are many steps taken already in this direction uh, what the united nations did is not uh, uh, should not be uh, underestimated, but these issues, by its nature, as social policies, would take long time. Mm -hmm. we, maybe we outsider, we would wish to see things happening tomorrow, but this, by its nature, cannot 
uh, happen that fast. Louis, I know you want to jump in, uh, jump in. Let me just say that this is World Chronicle, and our guest is Ms. Mervat Talawi, the Executive Secretary of the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Western Asia, or ESQA. Louis. I'd like to move the conversation to Iraq, if I may. What is ESQA doing there right now uh, in Iraq, given the... Uh, the we security situation. I mean, everybody seems to be fleeing the country, and so, uh, you know, given your mandate, it must be a little bit difficult. Uh, do you have any staff in Iraq, and what are you doing there? Uh, as you may know, uh, ESQA was uh, hosted by the Iraqi government for eight years, so we stayed in Iraq eight years. Did uh, you pull out? Uh, in uh, the Iraq-Iran uh, war. Okay. Back in yeah. the 80s. Mm. Yes. And they moved to um, uh, Jordan, and then from Jordan they moved to Beirut again. Um, I'm uh, saying that uh, what we do in Iraq, we do it from outside Iraq, from Beirut. We concentrate on uh, capacity building, whether for the individual or the machinery or the institutions within Iraq. The, the fact that we have been uh, living in Iraq for eight years, uh, we had now a number of our staff are Iraqis. They have very good connection with Iraq, with a number of ministers actually uh, in the government. So we, we have an easy access to the authority there. We can call them by phone. We can ask them what do they need, how can we help. And, uh, in fact, the Minister of uh, Planning, Hafez al-Mahdi, came to us uh, and uh, gave us a list of 2022 uh, tasks, tasks to, to do for them. Yeah. But talking, so to, talking to the authorities, if I may interrupt, talking to the authorities is one thing. I think you're more in the business of also talking to people. Well, the should we just clarify one thing? Yeah. Presumably yeah. the reason that you're not on the ground in Iraq is because you're not allowed to, to be yes. there, right? Yes, uh, uh, after, uh, after uh, the, uh, uh, this uh, massacre of the, yeah. uh, the um, UN uh, staff in Iraq in Aug August uh, 2003, Which, yeah. the, it is not allowed that yeah. you, you go uh, unless you have a security and clearance. And here's my question, how mm. difficult does that make your work, having to do your work essentially of, from a remote course, location? Of course, it is very difficult yeah. to work from outside Iraq. If we were inside Iraq, things would have moved uh, quicker, uh, larger scale, and so on. But given the circumstances, and we have to abide by the regulations, we, we try to help from outside. So they do come, the Iraqis, women, and not necessarily government only, because now uh, the government and the NGOs, there is no sensitivity there to, to send the, their NGOs. So we had uh, a number of women, 40 women who came, and we trained them for the coming election. We had professor of university, women and men, uh, to, to uh, upgrade uh, their laboratory and so on through putting them with other university in, uh, in uh, Beirut and in Emirate uh, students to, to have uh, training courses, uh, summer training courses in uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, and is, that, is that your pr primary function in Iraq, to, to give people skills, technical skills, so that they can run the government, basically? Uh, this is what w we can best do now since we are not on the ground there. If we were on the ground, we could help in water, in electricity, in all of these other what areas. In a supervisory capacity. Uh, but one thing, can you clarify yeah. to us, uh, who decide to not allow you to be in the ground in Iraq? No, we, we ca are under the obligation of the Secretary General. We cannot go there without his permission because he is uh, the main responsible for the staff mm -hmm. and their security. So uh, if he will allow ESCO to go, he has to allow UNDP, the other, but he is uh, now assigning a number mm -hmm. of uh, international staff, 35, to, uh, to deal with the political issue for the, ele the coming election. Mm -hmm. So this is priority for him. We have to abide by, t by his rule. And the problem there being, of course, that the UN has not been able <coughs> to put together a, a protection force to take care of the security of UN staff on the ground. Um, I, I want to come back to this idea of what you're trying to do to foster economic development in the region, which is integration 
we've met, we've talked about transport, roads, and and uh, uh, railways. railways and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to integrate disparate economies if they agree on the same principles. The world, it seems to me, has moved in the direction of accepting market forces, transparent economic systems right. with with courts that function, that sort of thing. The this part of the world that you're dealing with lags behind many other parts of the world in terms of its acceptance of those sorts of norms. Has that been a problem? I mean, we've heard of, 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 of some growing openness. I believe Egypt started a process about 15 <coughs> years ago, Syria more recently. Have they gone far enough? Is there more to be done? Where are your major problems in that sort of problem? Uh, the problem is twofold. First of all, there is lack of information about what is happening in these uh, countries. In the old idea that they are the, the most uh, underdeveloped in this region, in the world region, it's not correct. Many of them have uh, went f more than even some of the developed countries. Look at Dubai and, and Emirates. Uh, the Emirates, they have e-governance, e-commerce, e-business. Even uh, your passport is not stamped by the police. It is very advanced. Uh, some other are not as advanced. But openness to new technology is one thing. Mm -hmm. Openness to creating a legal system mm -hmm. where a, country, a company, a foreign company that comes mm -hmm. to invest in your com country has a problem, they can trust the judiciary to give a fair uh, determination to their case. Uh, problems of having to pay money under the table to people who have their hands out. Let Those are different sorts of problems. This is the second point I'm saying. The second point is the mentality. And this is a difficult thing. Although if you look at many uh, regulation and uh, legislation and investment law in many of these countries, they are very advanced. And uh, they, they allow for the private sector and many of their companies are privatized and so on and so forth. The latest of them may be Syria because it came late in opening its market for the private sector. But many others are, uh, as you said, Egypt from uh, more than 15 years, Saudi Arabia is from before that, and so on. The problem remains the mentality. The mentality of the technocrat who is in charge of implementing these laws and regulations. Some, some of their, their mentality is obstructing or deviating or interpreting the, the laws in a way that would hinder the, the, the capacity of, of a foreign investor to, to do that. You're talking about especially, uh, you're covering basically uh, some of the Gulf countries. Mm -hmm. And I guess one of the problems, I think, uh, to promote, you know, the social economic development, there's a lack also of uh, w human resources. How you deal with this problem? Human re uh, resources uh, for, for uh, with the unemployment, you mean? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. even, even you need to promote, you know, the, the your agenda, I mean, uh, in terms of development, uh, social, economic You mean there aren't enough capitalists out there? Is that what you're saying? No, not enough capital. Human resources, I yeah. mean, you the, know. The mentality, the mentality of people, <laughs> you know, who they can, you know. I, I think we, the major problem that still remain in these countries is some of the tradition mm -hmm. that affect the upbringing of, of the young people. Uh, some of them are very bright, but they are uh, shamed by this, uh, 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 some of this tradition that sometimes are not uh, positive ones. Mm -hmm. I don't mind to, to keep the good tradition, but uh, some of the negative ones should be really worked out and changed. And how, how do you do that? How do you change traditions? Because that is, I think, a key. Very yeah. Yes, it is very difficult, but I believe with the new technology and the me electronic media and all of this, we are not using our media enough, whether in the soap opera, whether in the film or uh, our writing. We, we should address all these negative issues, uh, maybe more than the education, because the education you can review the program and the syllabus and uh, change as you like. But 
but it is the media, the environment to reach out to the very remote area where you have to change the, the tribal system and the, the mentality and the, uh, the, uh, these uh, negative uh, things. Uh, we did not give enough attention yet mm -hmm. to this particular thing and we did not use our media enough for changing positively this uh, Speaking, speaking of change, if I may, one of the arguments that we hear a lot, n notably out of Washington since the, uh, the conflict in Iraq, is that a, a democratic Iraq, a stable Iraq, can have an incredible force in terms of being able to change the region. It can be a catalyst, if you will, uh, whether we're talking about human rights, gender equality, technological advances, whatever. Do you believe in that, in that sort of, in that line of thinking that if we can get Iraq right, and back on its feet, it can have an enormous impact uh, for change in the region. Or are, are we overestimating the impact uh, that that could have? Uh, look, uh, to be more uh, practical, uh, one country cannot change everything. Yeah, I mean, it's over uh, uh, optimist to to say that f if Egypt has uh, a democratic system, it will affect the other. Of course, affect, yes, uh, to a certain extent. But uh, I don't think so that uh, one country would change everything. Uh, the, the change should be in every country. All right, well, there's another issue to do with mentality that in, in other parts of the world where perhaps all else has failed, one thing that has always worked has to be, been to give microloans, especially to women, mm -hmm. so that they can start their own little right. businesses and enterprises. Is that something you're pursuing? And how does that... Uh, uh, work with what are still very patriarchal so societies in that region? Uh, as far as business is concerned, women in those patriarchal society has always been working in business. It's, uh, it's nothing uh, new for them. Uh, nothing new. But uh, this uh, to provide more financing, more uh, small credit and so on, and this is to facilitate the, uh, their task. But they have been always working whether they are nomad or in rural area or whatever, they have been working all, all through the history. But uh, there is no recognition for this and no payment for what uh, the... And you're investing are, uh, resources in women now? Yes, definitely. The, and we are encouraging more of this kind of small loans uh, for women. And we are doing it in, um, in South Lebanon after uh, Israel left these territories that's uh, a, that's in order to keep the people in the, the, the mountain not to come to Beirut. That to, sounds uh, like a, a hopeful note to end on. We're out of time, Mervat Talawi. Uh, thank you very much. Our guest has been Mervat Talawi, the Executive Secretary of the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Western Asia, or ESQA. She was interviewed by Louis Haman of Canadian Broca Broadcasting Corporation and Salah Ahwad, of the Ashark al Awasat newspaper. I'm Tony Jenkins. Thank you for joining us. We invite you to be with us for the next edition of World Chronicle. The electronic transcripts of this program may be obtained free of charge by contacting World Chronicle at the address on your screen. This program is a public affairs presentation from United Nations Television.